After Return of the Jedi in 1983, Star Wars fans waited 16 years for Lucasfilm to continue the saga. All I need is an idea. During that time, LucasArts kept the franchise thriving by releasing over 20 video games, many of which became bestsellers, and not just because they slapped a familiar logo on a turd like most movie tie-ins, but because they upheld the industry standard, and in some cases, exceeded it. After The Phantom Menace in 1999, Star Wars fans waited six years for Lucasfilm to put the saga out of its misery. I may have gone too far in a few places. During that time, LucasArts released over 30 video games, and again, many became bestsellers, but a few, such as Knights of the Old Republic, are still considered among the greatest ever. After the Walt Disney Company bought Lucasfilm in 2012, Star Wars fans waited only three years for them to resurrect the saga. I sold them to the white slavers that take these things and... <laughs> Okay. During that time, Disney halted all internal development at LucasArts and laid off 150 staff members in order to minimize the company's risk while achieving a broad portfolio of quality Star Wars games. But when all they released was Angry Birds and Tiny Death Star, gamers were the first to catch wind that maybe Disney was mishandling the property. Yes, sir. Wrong, sir. Wrong! Under Section 37B of the contract signed by him, it states quite clearly, I, the undersigned, shall forfeit all rights, privileges, and licenses, herein and herein contained, etc., etc. Delicatum! It's all there, black and white, clear as crystal, so you get Nothing! Don't worry though, they quickly announced that to develop this broad portfolio of quality Star Wars games, they were giving an exclusive, multi-year license to the company who had just been named Worst Company in America two years in a row. What? And to no one's surprise, except Disney's apparently, EA released a controversial pay-to-win Battlefield, I mean Battlefront game, got the most downvoted comment in Reddit history, and inspired a global investigation into whether loot boxes constitute illegal gambling. Take a chance, make it happen. Pop the cork, finger snapping. Spin the wheel, round and round we go. Don't worry though, remember Knights of the Old Republic? Yeah, remember its developer Bioware who went on to create Mass Effect, a single player space opera on par with Star Wars itself? Okay, well EA had them develop a multiplayer game that no one asked for and everyone hated. What? Don't worry though, remember Call of Duty? Remember how its creators went on to start Respawn Entertainment, a company known for making multiplayer games? Okay, well EA had them develop the first single player Star Wars game in almost 10 years. What? Uh, do not worry though! Seriously this time, don't worry, cause Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order turned out pretty good! But after all the waiting and controversies that fans have endured, my boyfriend watched every positive review like... Don't. Don't what? Don't give me hope. So, this isn't a review of Fallen Order. This is a review of what it's like to live with someone who I'm pretty sure only likes this game because it's Star Wars. Please consider this spoiler chart before continuing. In case you stop here, the gist of the video is I'm cranky! Big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Their support keeps this channel going, so stick around till the end to learn all about it. Not gonna lie, this game had me hyped in the beginning with its proper Star Wars atmosphere, sexy Darth Vader, and the kid from Click. And once the kid from Click started using his lightsaber, I was like, hey, this is gonna be a fun one to watch. Oh, f it's a Dark Souls. At first I thought, okay, maybe these meditation spots are just a reference to that time Liam Neeson spent his skill points before a boss. Oh, f that's for sure Dark Souls. <laughs> Realizing my first Star Wars video game experience was a surprise ripoff of From Software's Groundhog Day mechanic, right down to the creepy laughing NPCs, <laughs> <laughs> felt like this. <laughs> 
Unfortunately, it is far less punishing even on the highest difficulty. My boyfriend never needed to farm XP for three hours, and I never needed Vati Vidya to explain all the gobbledygook. More importantly, the Souls-like gameplay loop in Fallen Order is better paced for a casual viewer because in addition to Dark Souls, the developers also ripped off everything. They looted Uncharted for archaic climbing segments, raided Tomb Raider for tomb raiding puzzles, pirated Metroid for upgrade-based exploration, prayed to God of War for hidden loading screens, gathered intel on Middle Earth's nemeses for bounty hunters, and ran off with Sonic sneakers for some reason. That's Fallen Order, a medley of stuff you've already seen. As if Star Wars is merely rehearsing for its gaming comeback by singing familiar tunes, similar to how J.J. Abrams conducted a crowd-pleasing rehash with The Force Awakens. Both new beginnings play it safe, both are pretty good, and both confirm that the mouse can make a profit, which means a broad portfolio of quality Star Wars is starting to actually happen. Baby Yoda's so cute, I wanna throw him against the wall. However, both new beginnings also fail at improving upon what inspired them, giving pretentious people everywhere a reason to say trite or derivative or multi-billion dollar corporate slop for a society enslaved by consumption. And Fallen Order's neglect to noticeably innovate its run-of-the-mill mechanics was probably a deliberate and wise risk management decision. But the phrase, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, doesn't apply if you break it. I'm sorry, but this a broke overrated game have y'all lost your mind because i'll help you find it if all the titles it borrowed gameplay from are classic coke fallen order is a warm glass of dr bob it gets the job done but it tastes cheap and you start to wonder if dr bob wasn't star wars would anybody drink it would you drink dr bob for 60 dollars if it wasn't star wars the traversal is like if a kid asked his mom to buy uncharted and she said no because they have uncharted at home but the uncharted at home is this whoa Okay, the movements, the movements are a little, what's uh, going on? <laughs> I was just trying to do a basic move. And the Metroidvania backtracking, which usually rewards players with powerful enhancements, instead rewards them with a giant poncho collection. I mean, the series has Oscar winning costume design to take advantage of, but no, no, 23 ponchos make sense. There's 107 chests throughout the game and only eight contain non-cosmetic items. If Metroid Prime replaced missile and energy tanks with paint jobs for a ship you never look at, there'd be no sense of progression. And Star Wars though, this one reminds me of Boba Fett. Then the tomb raiding has okay puzzles involving blocks, balls, and iPhone 3 chargers, cause it's not like there's an entire sci-fi universe of doodads, thingamajigs, and whatchamacallits to design them around, so why not Zelda crap? Throw in a stormtrooper and boom, Star Wars puzzle. Don't wanna solve it? That's okay, just wait one second and BD Wong will tell you the answer. I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. But the random encounters with bounty hunters were a fantastic way to combine Star Wars lore with game design. The tactical guide says cocky and self-assured they haven't lost a bounty yet and don't intend to whoopsies did he just fall off and die <laughs> look at this elite bounty hunter here to kill me <laughs> wow watch out for this guy <laughs> Last but not least, the Sonic Adventure slip and slides work perfectly, and one or two to add some cinematic flair was a real treat. But 50 is wildly unreasonable. Was the level designer inspired by the alien worlds of a galaxy far, far away, or a McDonald's play place? Can't we have a greedy environment classic Sonic game for crying out freaking loud? Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Shelby is nitpicking and biased. I win, bye bye. But am I? Out of every game on this channel, Fallen Order had the most glitches, poorest performance, and dumbest AI, so hear me out. We all love Star Wars, and we're all so relieved there's finally a new video game to immerse us in it. It's a cinematic universe that is arguably better suited for interactive media than the big screen where it originated. Practically every video game genre is baked right into the lore. The ambiguity of light and dark is perfect for RPGs. The blaster packing outlaws are perfect for first person shooters. The spaceship designs are perfect for aerial combat simulators. The dozens of species, factions, and armies are perfect for real time strategy. The combat styles and super moves are perfect for hack and slash or 2D fighters. And pod racers are perfect for a high speed, photo finish against your friends.
But all EA has done with this golden goose of a license is make baby's first Dark Souls, fill it with collectibles they spent five minutes drawing in a coloring book, then lazily copy the smart kid's homework to do the bare minimum needed for a passing grade. And because Star Wars fans like me and my boyfriend are so thirsty, and our expectations of EA are so low, we're thankful to be quenched by a warm glass of Dr. Bob. Well, I'm spitting it back in their face today, folks. Fallen Order does not uphold the industry standard in 2019, nor does it deliver the polish that a Star Wars product deserves. I refuse to applaud a small step in the right direction when they should have already made a few giant leaps. But it's the best Star Wars game in over a decade, so 10 out of 10, I clapped! I clapped when I saw Darth Vader! And now, a holographic message from our sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. Always wanted to start your own business? Check out Discovering Success, taught by Emma Gannon. With a premium membership, you'll get unlimited access so you can join the classes and communities that are perfect for you. Whether you want to fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving. Skillshare is also super affordable. A subscription will cost you less than $10 a month. Join more than 7 million creators who have said, help me Skillshare, you're my only hope, by clicking the link in the description for your two-month free trial of premium.